What's going on, everybody? It's Bulls Nation Station back at it again, and I'm here with another one of those Where Are They Now Chicago Bull Edition segments. And so I know you guys have been checking it out the past few weeks. If you haven't, I'll leave links to the first three I've done down below. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And so before I get into it, I want you guys to subscribe to my page as I keep you guys updated with the Bulls content, the Bulls rumors, the Bulls news. And yeah, I'm going to get into the first player I'm going to talk about. And the first player is my guy, Chris Dunn. How many of you guys remember Chris Dunn? If you do, leave a comment down below of your favorite memories of Chris Dunn on the Bulls. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about him for a minute. And so Chris Dunn, he is a professional basketball player who played point guard for the Chicago Bulls. Coming out of New London, Connecticut, he discovered his basketball talent at an early age. And in high school, he scored 2,000 career points. So he was getting a lot of buckets and he was ranked 24th in the nation. And in college, he attended Providence and started a career injured where he tore his labrum and went to go get shoulder surgery for that. And then his sophomore season, he only played four games and had to get another shoulder surgery. So his first two years in college, he barely even played. And so the following two years, he earned rewards such as Big East Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, and First Team All East. And so in 2016, he was selected in the draft with the fifth overall pick, despite having strong interest from the Bulls. You know, they really wanted him at the time, but he ended up going to the Timberwolves. And so Tom Thibodeau, he was very interested in Chris Dunn, and so he got a chance to coach him when he came to Minnesota. And after an OK season, he was traded to the Bulls alongside Lori Marketing and Zach Levine in exchange for Jimmy Butler. And while the teams he was on, you know, wasn't really that good, the Chicago Bulls teams, they were officially, you know, a rebuilding team. So Jimmy Butler left. Uh, it was just a whole new era of basketball. That's when we had Jim Boylan and Fred Hoiberg. And we was just going through a lot. The management wasn't agreeing with the coaching staff. And there was a lot of turmoil. And then you guys know the whole Jim Boylan era. He was treating them like, I don't know. It was just weird. He had them clocking in for work. It was just weird. But... Yeah, the teams wasn't that good, but I feel like Chris Dunn, he actually started off playing pretty well. You know, he was anointed as a starter. Some of his highlight games were against the Bucks, where he had 20 points, 12 assists, 4 steals, 2 blocks. He had a really good game in an overtime win against the Wizards, where he had 26 points to 13 assists. And so he showed a lot of promise. You know, a lot of people were beginning to talk. They were like, okay. Maybe Chris Dunn could be this point guard for the future for the Bulls and help lead them, you know, trending back upward. And so as the following seasons went on, his offense never really prospered. You know, he always been a good defender, but it's just getting to the point to where he wasn't the greatest offensively. And when I say that, I'm mostly talking about his shooting. His shooting percentages wasn't good at all, especially his three point percentage. You know, he wasn't just the type to shoot. And so that's when they ended up bringing over Thomas Sadoransky, who was a backup to Chris Dunn. And, you know, Sadoransky did an admirable job. And then he ended up taking a starting position. And then after that, they drafted Kobe White. And so they were pretty, you know, full at the point guard position. And Kobe White being that young prospect, you know, he did the things that Chris Dunn wasn't good at, which was natural scoring. Kobe White, he was like that guy to come off the bench and heat up and hit threes. You know, that was just something Chris Dunn couldn't do. It resulted in them playing a lot of three-guard lineups. And Chris Dunn, he still played, you know, okay. His defense was good. He still drew points for being in the all-defensive team. But it was just couldn't really score in the way they wanted him to score and so after 2019 you know Chris Dunn his contract was up you know he didn't resign with the Bulls and so he signed with the Atlanta Hawks and he only played four games before needing leg surgery I don't know if you guys remember but Chris Dunn was the original stopper for Trey Young I mean he would have some battles with him and Trey Young Chris Dunn to get into it and Chris Dunn was locking Trey Young up 
And so you guys talk about Io now, but if you really know your Bulls history, Chris Dunn, he was the original one. So, you know, he just passed down his son to Io. But yes, yeah, so Chris Dunn, he never really got a chance, you know, in Atlanta because of his surgery. And then after that season, he was traded to the Celtics and then traded right again to the Grizzlies in which the team waived him shortly after. And so he spent some time in the G League with the Ontario Clippers right after that as he you know, started to struggle to find a spot in the NBA. And then after his time in the G League, he signed with the Portland Trailblazers for a season and spent some time there. And so um, Chris Dunn, he has been reporting on the team so far yet for this season. But yeah, that's the history of Chris Dunn. You know, he'll be remembered as one of the point guards in the rebuilding Jim Boylan year. So he had a lot of hope and a lot of promise that just never really panned out. And I feel like he still has a lot of talent and he can still find a way to make a small little mark in his league. And, you know, we're just going to hope the best for Chris Dunn. But comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of Chris Dunn on the Bulls. Do you guys wish he would have stayed longer? Uh, comment down below. And now I'm going to get into this next player. And the next player I want to talk about is my guy, Brad Miller. I know you guys remember Brad Miller. He was on that Chicago Bulls team with Joe King Noah, Lou Aldane, Ben Gordon, rookie Derrick Rose. That was actually one of my favorite Chicago Bulls teams. And Brad Miller, he was just pretty good. And he played a really good part in, you know, the trajectory of the Bulls. But I'm going to get into that now. And so Brad Miller, you know, he was born in Indiana, played prep school for a season at Maine. And then he returned to play for Purdue University. And so he played under under Purdue. He had a really good season. You know, he played all the way up to his junior season. And then that's when he was the only center in Purdue history to lead the team in assists. And so he just had a very good knack for passing. Yeah, he just had a good touch all around. So Brad Miller, he was pretty good. And then uh, his senior season, that was actually his best season in which he helped Purdue go to a 28 and eight record. He averaged 17 points and eight rebounds. And so, yeah, he led them to the Sweet 16 and then uh, second seed in the NCAA tournament. And so in the last game, he had 30 points and 12 rebounds. And so at that point, you know, he was NBA ready. Right when his career in college was over, he actually had to start his career in Italy because the NBA had a lockout that season in 98 and so he played for Italy and then in 99 he signed with the Charlotte Hornets as an undrafted free agent and then he played for the uh, Hornets for two seasons and then one of his best games he had was 25 points shooting nine for nine from the field and 100 percent from the line and so, you know, he, he played good and made a nice little mark on that team. That Hornets team made it to the playoffs where they lost 1-3 to Philly. Then he made his first appearance to the Chicago Bulls. And so he signed with the Chicago Bulls as a free agent in 2000. And then in 2002, he was a part of the team. He left a nice mark, but he was very much famous for his altercation with Shaq. Big Shaquille O'Neal, you know, uh, Charles Oakley gave Shaq a hard foul on that team. I guess Brad Miller's trying to walk away, but Shaq, he swung at Brad Miller. And then, you know, Shaq was suspended three games. But, yeah, that was an interesting thing. But, yeah, he had a nice little mark on there. He still wasn't fully developed. But then after that, the Bulls traded him alongside Ron Artest. And then they sent all them to the Indiana Pacers for Jalen Rose. So that's what created that famous uh, Indiana Pacers team. I know you guys remember the brawl that they had alongside the Detroit Pistons. So that was a pretty good, that was a pretty good experience for Brad Miller because, you know, that was his hometown. You know, he's from Indiana. He wanted to stay in Indiana, but... You know, he was involved in a signing and trade to the Kings, and he was kind of hurt that he couldn't go back to Indiana, but that was his opportunity to make the most money that he ever could have made. And so he signed So he signed the extension with the Kings. He stayed there from 2003 all the way to 2009, and that's when he ran into 
his partner, I know a lot of you guys know who's also a good key piece of that team, was uh, John Salmons. And so him and John Salmons, they became good teammates. And then in February 2009, they traded him back. They uh, sent Brad Miller and John Salmons back to the Bulls for Drew Gooden and Andre Nocioni. And that created our, you know, young Chicago Bulls team. And so Brad Miller, he was the guy that provided depth behind Joe King Noah. And I feel like he showed Joe King a lot. You know, he that passing ability Joe King Noah developed. You know, I feel like Brad Miller had a huge part to do with that. He showed him a lot of tricks, a lot of angles that you can make the pass. You know, Brad Miller, he was a really good three-point shooter. And so them times that Joe King Noah went out, Brad Miller, I mean, he came in and he did his thing. And so that pretty much led the Bulls into competing in the 2009 playoffs after missing the previous two years. He was playing against, you know, the Boston Celtics. And that was one of the most classic first-round series of all time. And Brad Miller was a part of that. So, you know, he has some good games. He posted a double-double of 23 points and 10 rebounds in the game. Now, even though they lost, he played super well. And that actually earned him another nice contract, which he signed in 2010. Brad Miller, he signed a three-year contract with the Houston Rockets. And he was expected to back up, you know, Yao Ming as insurance. And so, played really good for the Houston Rockets. But then after that, he got dealt to the Timberwolves. You know, he was traded there alongside the rights of another future Bulls player. I know you guys heard of Nikola Miritic. And so that sent uh, them two to the Timberwolves. And then he had a microfracture knee surgery that he hurt his knee in like 2011, something like that. And then he was pretty much ready to retire then. He was like, yeah, it's not looking too good. You know, my knee is messed up. That was pretty much it. He got traded a couple more times to the Hornets, to the New Orleans Hornets and the Phoenix Suns. And then after that last team waved on, he pretty much made his decision to retire. That's pretty much the history of Brad Miller in the short box. But, you know, he will always be remembered in Bulls Nation just as that special backup to Joe King Noah. He was a center that we wasn't really accustomed or used to as far as the shooting as far as the passing brad miller what, what is he doing now he is actually going back home and he's following his dream you know he grew up being a country boy being outdoors and fishing and hunting and doing things like that and so that's what he's been doing he actually runs a um, show now called country boys outdoors and they pretty much hunt and fish out there in indiana and they have a whole bunch of land that they've brought. So it's a pretty cool thing just to see, you know, a totally different lifestyle than what he was living when he was playing basketball. I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, shout out to Brad Miller. I want you guys to comment down below. Let me know what you guys remember about Brad Miller when he was on the Bulls. And don't forget to subscribe to my page and like this video. And I'm going to holler at you guys later. I'm out.